Welcome in the Sports Talk with Theo Dorsey. South Georgia, let's talk sports. It's safe to say Tiff County made the right hire by promoting Ashley Anders in 2015. In just his third year as head coach, he's already led the Blue Devils to the most regular season wins in the past decade, and he still has a game left. The Blue Devils are toppling records almost as often as they've rolled over opponents this year, and Anders has proved his, proved his worth, but it's early November, and his work isn't quite done. He joins the show tonight to talk sports and hopefully get beaten in trivia in just a moment. Welcome into the show, Coach Anders. 8-1 uh, and one Blue Devils right now that you're leading in your third season, and I'm sure you're riding a high wave right now, aren't you? Yeah, super excited. I'll tell you what, you know, I'm uh, you know, just ecstatic right now. You know, the kids are playing hard, and, uh, hey, we're, we're, we're excited, ready for the playoffs. Of course, of course. Well, before, before we get into that and even get into this season, I want to talk about kind of where you came from because we like to go through coaches' resumes. Yours is a little different. Many of the high school coaches that we've had here had a lot of high school uh, background. You have a lot of college background, starting at Holmes Community College from 2000 to 2002 out in Mississippi. Then you made your debut in South Georgia as a coach, at least, at Valdosta State from 2002 to 07. You went to Georgia Southern as well as a defensive coordinator from 07 to 09, then Murray State from 2010 to 2013. But what many people, especially here in South Georgia, are probably interested in is that run you had at Valdosta State where you helped lead them to a national title. Can you speak to those years down in Wintersville and what you picked up uh, with the Blazers? I tell you what, man, it was it was a great experience, uh, you know, for me as a coach, you know, and the things that I learned along the way and, uh, you know, the, the, the things, the experiences that I had with the kids and, and just growing and maturing. But I tell you what, uh, Valdosta is a great place. Valdosta is a great place. And, uh, and I was just, that, that, was a, that was a great run that we had. And, uh, you know, it, I'd love to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. And you're not from Georgia like we spoke. You're from Arkansas. Uh, what was your first couple of experiences with Georgia? Uh, actually, uh, recruiting. Um, you know, when I when I got into college coaching, uh, uh, I GA'd at Auburn. You know, we came down and, and recruited a lot of guys in South Georgia. And then when I went on in, into Holmes uh, Community College, uh, you know, actually 82, 84 corridor, you know, I mean, that's where we stayed and, <laughs> and coached a lot of guys from there. And uh, I always knew it was great football. And then when I had the opportunity to come to Valdosta to coach, and uh, I jumped at it. Of course, you're the D.C. there, like we're seeing here, some of the video from some of the older days, not exactly 02 <laughs> to 07, but that's, uh, I think that's the championship game day uh, from 04, and I want to speak about that season. In the 04 championship, you guys uh, had one of the top defenses in the nation in Division Two. You led the, def the nation in turnover margin at plus 20, and you had a pretty good showing. I know you're proud of the national championship <laughs> defensive showing. Can you speak to what happened there? Well, I tell you what, we were actually playing the – uh, a high profile offense in Pittsburgh State who had actually set some national records and uh, you know the group of guys we had on defense man they they weren't flashy or anything like that they just they bought into what we were doing uh, they came to practice every day and, and and they played as a team and I tell you what it was it was something special because you know each and every time that they walked out on the field you know they expected to win the game Right, and your eyes are lighting up just remembering <laughs> those days and I do want to speak to the fact that you guys allowed I think 31 points in that game but it was special because I think that team was averaging, what, like 57 a game yeah, that year? Yeah, 56. Actually, they, I think they beat Oklahoma's uh, national average, you yeah. know. And uh, so it, it was, you know, even though you give up that, <laughs> that many points, you know. But I tell you what, uh, the way that we did it, it, it was pretty special. That is. That had to be a special moment for you, especially wrapping it up with the national championship. And then moving on from Valdosta State, you had a couple more stops. And then you got brought here, at, to, well, not here, but in South Georgia <laughs> to Tiff County. Uh, what was the decision-making process for you, not only to accept the job in 2013, but then also to accept the promotion to head coach in 2015? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I, I actually recruited Tifton, recruited a lot of South Georgia schools, and, uh, you know, 
the, the quality of football, you know, in South Georgia and, and Georgia as a whole is just unbelievable. And, uh, you know, when I decided to go into high school, um, you know, we always liked the Valdosta area, liked being in South Georgia, my wife and I, and, and we knew it was a great place to raise our kids. So, uh, you know, the opportunity presented itself for, at Tiff County, and I was like, that's as South Georgia as it gets. And uh, <laughs> so we we, uh, we decided to make the move down here. And then, uh, you know, was the defensive coordinator for two years. Um, you know, enjoyed what I was doing, and then the, uh, the opportunity came along to become the head coach, and uh, I was honored to be able to, to do that. Right, and when you took over your, your first year in 2015, five and five, the next year, six and five, but a steady progression now up to eight and one this season. Uh, what has that growth been like? And I know you've done a lot of that with this senior class you have now. What has that growth been like over these three uh, years? Well, I, I, you know, I think it starts at the, at the lower levels, you know. So I, I try to spend as much time as I can at the at the middle schools and, and, and um, you know, freshmen over at our freshman school and, and just to spend as much time as I can with those kids and, and just talk about the core values that we have and, um, you know, the importance of doing the right thing and all that. And, and the more time that you can spend with those kids, you know, the trust factor gets there. And, uh, you know, when the kids trust you, they'll play for you. And I kind of think that's where we are right now. All right, they're playing very well for you. And very well is also something that can describe the region that you play in. I think very well is underselling it. <laughs> Uh, we take a look at the Region 17A play. It's it's it, would you call it the top region in the state? Man, I tell you what, you ask me, I think it's the top region in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> no, it definitely <laughs> it, it, it it definitely up there, if not the top region in the nation. When you look at Colquitt County, Lowndes, Camden County, and Tiff County yourself, look at the records up here. Lowndes won the region this year at 10 and 0, basically scoring 50 points at will. You guys right there in second place right now at 8 and 1. Colquitt County, a team that's just recently off a 30 and 0 streak with two state championships. They are seven and three this year. And then Camden County falling down at the bottom of that, uh, kind of the, they get the short end of the stick having to be in the, the, the region with you guys this year, but they've held their own in previous years as well. I mean, just between these four teams in the past 20 years, nine state championships. So it's a bloodbath. And what is it like being able to compete against these guys and bettering your team? Well, I tell you what, it, it's the, the, the region is phenomenal. I mean, first of all, you got great athletes, you know, at, at all the schools. And then on top of that, man, you got great quick coaches. I mean, there's there's not a game that goes by that, I mean, you know, you're, you're waiting for something to happen because the coaching staffs are so good. But, uh, you know, the, the run that um, you know, that, that South Georgia's had, you know, over the last 20 years, like you said, I mean, is, is phenomenal, you know. Uh, I mean, you got to play every week, you know, and anybody can beat anybody, and uh, you got to come prepared and ready to play. Yeah, they say iron sharpens iron, so, <laughs> so that's a lot of what's going on in the region, and if you're a coach, you're hoping that's what's going on at practice. Speaking of practice, Mike Fussell, WALB News 10's own, came to your practice, and he spoke to you about what are some of those Fun facts about Coach Ashley Anders for the f people at home that don't know. So let's take a look at some of those. Your favorite movie is Secretariat. Is that the Triple Crown? Triple that's, Crown? That's it. That's it right that's there. It. there. I'll tell go. you what, man, I, that, that, that horse, we talk about <laughs> competing all the time. That guy competed, you know. So, I mean, I thought it was a great story. I, I enjoyed the movie. That's cool. I see your wife. She wife's in the studio. She's laughing at that. She probably heard the story a couple of times. I watched it with you, too. Well, actually, to be honest with you, I like it so much. It, in the summer leading up to football season, I always watch it. Oh, so. wow. Okay. Okay. That's a <laughs> That's a good fun fact. Yeah. I'm sure she enjoys with it. Enjoys it. With Actually, you. when when the movie came out, I was at in Kentucky at Murray <laughs> State. So. Oh, you're a super fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Well, also something maybe you maybe do you like it as much as Secretary? You like fish as your favorite food? Is that? Yeah, it? I tell you what. I'm. I, I guess the reason I'm, I'm a big fisherman. Love yeah. it. And uh, so we we probably eat fish about once a week, maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let's see how much your players know about their own coach and if they can guess some of these right. Oh now. gosh. <laughs> I'm going to have to say it's probably going to be a Western or something. Probably like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Do you know what his favorite food is? Uh, I have to go with fish. Oh, man. He said fish. You got it. <laughs> uh, I'll have to say spaghetti. I don't know. Spaghetti. Maybe if you throw some fish in the spaghetti, then, then he's right. We eat spaghetti well. every Sunday, so that may be why he said that. <laughs> okay, okay. So he's, he's playing as he's playing the uh, the he's playing it safe. Yeah. <laughs> well, right after this, we're going to have trivia after break. Before we go to break, I want to ask you a quick trivia question. You, if you win against Camden County, you will have the highest winning percentage in Tiff County school history for a coach. Do you know who currently holds that record right now? Wow. Uh, 
Jay Walls? Nah, nah. It's the guy who the field is named after. Brody. Brody. Oh, Brody okay. owns the record. Know. And I'm glad you got that wrong. That means I might actually finally win a trivia game. <laughs> we got trivia right after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We've learned a lot about Coach Andrews already, but we took an even closer week look this week. That's right, Theo. We found out what makes him tick on and off the field at practice this week. A siren sounds and squads of Tift County Blue Devils march on to the next station. Head coach Ashley Andrews is directing it all, preparing his team for Friday night. It's been a long road, I assure you that, but, uh, you know, I, you know, my dad was a coach, you know, fell in love with coaching, fell in love with football, and uh, it's kind of been a part of my life, you know, all, ever since. And that life has taken him across the country, from colleges to high schools, over a matter of decades. You know, you've got really got to evolve with football. You know, offenses have changed, and, uh, you know, over the last you know, 21 years that I've been coaching, and uh, uh, you've got to kind of go with the change in order to keep up with the Joneses, I'd say. But through all the changes, one thing stays constant, at least according to his players. He's a he's a really great coach. Uh, I love playing for him. He's he's a good uh, good mentor, and he, he uh, keeps everybody motivated, and uh, everybody's always full steam ahead. And from the looks of it, he is a motivator. But that's because the very players he hopes to push along are doing the same for him. Probably the most rewarding is uh, is these guys out here. You know, is uh, uh, you know building uh, relationships with your players. You know, and, and trying to mentor them along their uh, young adult life. And for some, the impact is already paying dividends. He's he's real to me. Like personally, I know him, and like um, he he teaches me a lot on the field and off the field. So. A lot of coaches don't do that. A lot of coaches, they just want to win, but he's basically like a dad to me. And Coach Anders has a big family that supports him as well. His wife's name is Sherry. The two have been together since college. He says they share a love for sports. They also certainly share a love for their children, which if they have three, and one of them is even on the Tift County football team. But that brings us to the <laughs> trivia portion of our show. We like to call it Theo versus everyone because that's exactly oh. what happens. So welcome, Coach. <laughs> All right, here's how it works. I'm going to ask you guys a series of trivia questions. You buzz in there to answer. If you get it right, you get a ball, and the person with the most at the end wins. Are you guys right, ready? So we're getting to compete right yeah, here. Yeah, you're getting to compete. <laughs> All right, good. We'll go right into it. These are this or that questions. You'll have two choices. You have to ring in and pick one of them. All right, which NFL coach has the most overall wins? Is it Don Shula or Tom Landry? Don Shula. Theo, we got it right. Let's get you it, got baby. got the quickness there. Uh, early. Right. He's got an early, early lead. This is something we haven't seen before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <All> letting up. <laughs> All right, we'll go right on to the next. All right, the first football game ever was played between which two teams? Princeton and Rutgers or Harvard and Princeton? Princeton and Harvard. Wrong. Uh, All right. We'll keep going on here. <laughs> Still a close game. <laughs> was, I should have got that. I messed up. All right. The Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets played during the first telecast of Monday Night Football. What decade was that? 1980s or the 1970s? 70s. Yes, sir. Okay. It was actually September 21st, 1970. So right there, right in the, mm. the nick of the 70s. Him, yeah, so. you <laughs> <laughs> he should know these things. You're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now these questions, you guys are going to have to come up with the answer on your own. I'm not going to give you choices. Oh. Uh, so which NFL stadium currently has the largest seating capacity? NFL? Mm. Yes. We'll go with Dallas Stadium. Oh. No. You oh, get, oh. It is oh, not Dallas. Minnesota Vikings. No. Oh. It is. And this is one that we've kind of got tricked on before. Coliseum? Yeah, it's the There's Los no Angeles way. Coliseum. Yep, that's. Okay. I wouldn't have got 93, that. 93,000 over 93,000. Wow. So. All right, we'll keep moving on. How wide are NCAA goalposts? Oh, how wide? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough <laughs> one. <laughs> Two yards. I, I coach defense, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. All right. The answer, obviously a little obscure, 18 feet, 6 inches, 18 oh, and a half yeah, feet right. wide. Well, that's how, oh, I said 10 yards. That's way longer. That, is, that would be huge. That's, that's, that's 30 feet. 18, so <laughs> high, school, high school's got to be 20. Yep. yep so oh. it's, it's, should have asked that one instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll keep rolling here. How many teams were in the Arena Football League when it debuted in 1987? Six. Close, you but no. so sure. Eight. No. Uh, it was four. Uh, Only four teams the in the way. league there, but 
This brings us to the halfway point of our game, and you guys are tied <laughs> right now. We're both awful. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a battle of the Titans here, but uh, <laughs> you're tied, so we'll see what happens after All the right. break. We'll see if things heat up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Sports Talk. We're playing Theo versus everyone. Welcome back, <laughs> Coach Anderson. Right now, it's a tight game. It's going to get exciting here. We only have a couple questions left, so we'll, All right. we'll get right into I'm it. In, we're fixing He's got to get the ball it, ready. He's oh, got the ball ready. Let me get ready to it, man. <laughs> All right, we'll, <laughs> we'll start out here. What movie is based on the true story of African-American high school football coach Herman Boone integrating his team at T.C. Williams High School? Remember the top. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wait, you, first of all, if he buzzes in, you shouldn't be able to finish that question. <laughs> no, nah, that's good. You get the point. You get the I point. don't know where that rule comes from. <laughs> I made that rule up on the spot. Audible rule there. All right. I, I can't let the players make the rule. You're rules. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. We'll keep moving on. Who was the first sitting president to attend a regular season football game? Ooh. A little obscure there. Uh, John F. Kennedy? No. Wow. Ronald Reagan? No. <laughs> it, you guys are in the kind of a right era. It was Richard Nixon. Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and now we're on the last question. Oh, all right, this here we one go. though, worth two points. I need it. So right. anything can happen here. Theo can get get the win. You can solidify the win, or you can get the win by nobody getting it right. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> all right, how many times have the Chargers franchise changed locations? Coach. Three. Yes, sir. Oh, you man. Got it. <laughs> you actually hey. get two for that. Uh, so, uh, just so in hey. case you want to brag. Hey, look here. <laughs> you know, hey. First of all, <laughs> that, um, just, so you, <laughs> you want, just so you know, <laughs> just so you know, that was just a guess. Oh, oh man. <laughs> it was a good guess, that's and good. it brought you to the win. So that's, that's what counts. Mm, that's there. good. <laughs> well, I'll I'll be a good sport, and we'll keep Coach Anders on the show for one more block. <laughs> I want to get him out of here. We'll get one more block and talk about some of the records that Tiff County has surpassed this year. Welcome back to Sports Talk. We're joined by Ashley Anders of Tiff County, and I was a fool for thinking I can give him a loss. This guy's 8-1 on the season, <laughs> so, so it's a tough task in itself. But, uh, Coach, I want to talk about the, the things that the team has been doing so far this season. Uh, Griffin Collier, uh, your quarterback, already surpassed the passing uh, career record for the school as well as you know yards and touchdowns. Rashad Bateman passed the school record for yards and touchdowns and receptions yet? Receptions. He got receptions as well, but Bateman's closing in on an even bigger uh, mark right now. Rashad Bateman, he's sitting at currently 1,198 yards. He has 15 touchdowns and 55 receptions. If he gets 457 more yards, if you guys can keep up at home, he will break the state record for receiving yards in a season. Coach Anders, what kind of threat is this guy on that football field? Well, I tell you what, you know, first, what an honor to even be, you know, be mentioned, you know, in the as, as a leader in the state of Georgia with the great football that's, that's been played here. But, you know, Rashad's a phenomenal guy, and, uh, man, he is just so explosive. I mean, you know, there, there's, a, there's a chance that he could score a touchdown at any time, you mm -hmm. know. So, I mean, we, we, we weigh heavily on him. Uh, you know, we try to get the ball to him as much as we can, get him his touches during the game. And, you know, sometimes it's it's really great. And sometimes, man, he just, you know, amazes you. So, uh, you know, we're really excited about watching him through the remainder of the season. Definitely so. Now, and I want to I want to make mention of something because every highlight we get of Bateman, he's doing the same thing. <laughs> he's running straight down the field like it's a 100 meter dash. Uh, no safety help in, in region in class 7A these days. What's going on? I tell you what, you know, there, there, there's a there's a little joke in the office with uh, with our offensive coordinator, Mark Beach, you know, yeah. and sometimes when it's not, you know, we're kind of getting a lull or something. I go, you know, remember that play that uh, Bateman runs down the field and we throw him a touchdown, run that one. <laughs> <laughs> really, but. though, it seems to work because he has 15 touchdowns. Yeah. He's averaging 21 yards per catch, which is probably near unprecedented. Also, I want to talk about before we get you off the show as we run out of time, you guys have Camden County to close the season out to try and get a nine-win season in the regular season as well as stay focused, get a win in the region. How important has this week of practice been to make sure guys don't overlook that team? And it's, it's, it's been huge. You know, I mean, Camden's got a quality team. I mean, they have quality coaches, you know, with Coach Spire being his first-year coach down there. And, uh, you know, I know that we're going to get their best game. Uh, the reason being is, you know, Camden, this is a must win for them, you know, pretty much to get into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we really we really talked to our guys this week about, uh, you know, really focusing, focus on the little things. Uh, hey, let's just win one game a week for the next six weeks. Right, and what do you feel like you've been getting from your guys at practice? I know there's been a lot of talk of playoffs, but you're not in the playoffs yet. No, no, but, um, you know, if we take care of business, you know, we, we tell the guys, hey, you worry about, you know, playing hard 
and executing and doing those type things, you know, the coaches will worry about all the other things. So uh, just just come out, practice, focus, and let's uh, let's take it one game at a time. Right. As you take it one game at a time, we'll be following and capturing every moment on the locker room report. Thank you again for joining us. I'm, I'm mad I couldn't send you out with a loss, <laughs> but we'll see you next time on Sports Talk. Have a good one. All right. Thank you.